Hey guys, my name's Shaft, and that means you're watching Crash Course. This is part three of our series on the Triforce model. The first part of the series focused on Army, the second on Economy, and this one is going to be about technology. As you can see, each video had its own theme. With Army, the theme was doing enough damage to your opponent to either transition or in the game. With either of the economy approaches, you were trying not to die while reaching a composition of your choice, whether that be something technological based or overwhelming your enemy with basic units. In this video, the biggest theme is going to be about map control because you're not gonna have a lot of it. The first technology style I would like to look at is going to be a technology army type style, and then we'll look at the more greedy technology economy style. With the technology army style, it's going to be all about preventing your opponent getting scouting information. It's about showing your opponent one thing while secretly doing another. You have to maintain the illusion of the typical game by preventing scouting information through the control of key locations on the map. So let's say, for example, you were a Terran player. You would need to stop a Zerg from getting an Overlord, so you might would keep a patrol along some of the more common paths, especially ones that would scout your sensitive building. In this particular game, which was played in Polygon Invitational number 10, you see Dark showing just the normal opener that he almost always uses, Reapers, Hellions, and then, shortly thereafter, he hits with a pretty powerful Hellbat timing. Now, that's not going to kill Dark. So, in the meantime, he shows a typical mech follow-up. He's even clearing these lings out of his third base. Makes it really look like he was going to go take a third. And then, instead of going for the traditional mech, which is kind of a slow roll, get your third base, get your gas, and really get that 200-200 supply army, he instead hits with a stem pack, timing, plus his original Hellbats, which ultimately kills Dark fair and square. The reason it's able to kill Dark is Dark was not expecting the powerful, not to mention quick, follow up with stem pack, because quite frankly, going into a late game, this is about as bonkers as it could get. There is really no late game here, because there is no economy. So the tech army style is really just another kind of all-in. It's just not an army heavy all-in. It's more important to get the technology. Neither of these builds will allow you to get that much in the term of upgrades that would proceed into a late game. So it's about killing your opponent pretty much outright. This is going to be the hardest type of build to transition out of. This is the type of build that you would expect to see like a Thor rush on. Like a Thor Rush, SCVs, it's just about that one unit, but because it's so technological, it's super powerful. Tech economy builds, however, have a lot in common with tech army. Again, it's all about map control. But instead of focusing on denying your opponent's scouting information, it's just going to be about maintaining the edges of your base. You're going to have a hard time doing that. Just outside of your base. Your opponent could set up the biggest army and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. You can only really engage on your side of the map under certain conditions. And honestly, sometimes you even have a hard time holding the fringes of your own base. But the way that you're going to do that is through the use of technology. Technological units, as you begin to produce them, will grant you smaller and smaller bits of map control until eventually you are able to move out with your ultimate composition. Buildings are super useful, both because they allow you to spend minerals, and this is a very gas heavy strategy, so you're gonna have plenty of them, but also because you can create choke points that force your opponent into a narrow passage and make your defenses much, much stronger. Combine this with something like pile on overcharge from a mothership core, and you have a great situation. This is actually something Protoss really love to do, but every race can do it to middling degrees. Again, this, neither of these types of style are the most super popular, but you will see them pop up from time to time and you should know how to roll with the punches. Typically when employing a style like this, you're going to take losses on defense, as you can see from the worker counts here, 
but you're still going to end up ahead just because of your own production. The biggest thing you should be looking out for are things like drops or nidus networks and any other kind of attack which will bypass the building walls that's going to be particularly harmful so be certain to scout any destructible debris or the fringes of your base where drops might uh you know have a line of sight blocker to hide behind eventually you're going to be able to push out in small quantities not enough to like go attack your opponent yet but you're going to be able to reclaim a lot of the space on your side of the map be sure you don't overextend too soon though, because you can see Pilly Pilly do that right here. This creates weaknesses at home and you might be too weak to actually go ahead and do the damage you need to. You're going to lose units and this can set you behind. You should spend most of your time at this point in the game just clearing the map because you're only going to have one, maybe two big chances to make a successful attack and you cannot afford to trade. It's going to be super hard to transition out of this because you don't have that many upgrades. You're really committing to this one particular style. It doesn't have the flexibility of an economic based style. Not only that, but they're also super punishing just because of the gas investment that is tied up into it. Not only do you not have upgrades, but the money you would have spent on upgrades got put into this unit, so if it dies for no damn reason, <laughs> good luck. Typically an opponent facing this is going to favor a mineral heavy offense and trade things, in this case uh, against a zerg opponent, he's going to trade queens and lings and things that don't cost a whole lot of gas. The reason for this is he can take extra bases and even if you kill off one or two of his bases, he can move his drones around and just deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. The minerals are going to be far more important to him than the gas. Now this is just if you're in a tech versus economy situation. This could go all kinds of different ways depending on how your opponent opens. Regardless of which style you decide to go for, technology and army or technology and economy, either one is going to be reliant on how well you can control the map and on getting your timings down to near perfection. It is going to require great mechanics to be able to pull this off well. Because you have to know both what you are doing and what your opponent thinks you're doing. So this is going to be more of a high-end mind game type style. This is the type of style that someone like MC made famous. You remember that time he canceled his uh, Nexus expansion and instead all end his opponent who had just scouted it? Yeah, that's really based on some kind of technology style. If you remember, he was a huge fan of Stargate play off just one gateway. The reason things like that worked well is because it was a technological opener. And we're not seeing them so much in the meta today, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this type of content, please join a growing number of people who have pledged to our Patreon to help us run more events like one of the games you saw in this video. Some of the bigger donators so far include Wesley Knight, as well as MC Too Tall Michael Gates. We appreciate you and everyone else who have donated, and if you want a shout out in one of our videos, please consider pledging to us on Patreon. Even one dollar means the world to us. Those dollars begin to add up, and they make what we do possible. So thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you for watching and liking and sharing this video with your friends. By the way guys, we are looking for a new observer for our future events. If you think you have what it takes to learn the way we like things observed. We will provide full training. Just leave us a comment on this video. I am Shaft of Polygon Gaming. See you next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.